So, happy Sunday. <laughs> this is a day where people do a lot of different things to reinforce their programming. Um, my husband's out fishing. Other people are doing whatever they do on Sundays. And so, um, my dog, you know, last night, she uh, was doing the circuit a few times, actually, in the middle of the night. And... When my husband comes home, he brings home a bunch of stuff, whatever. So I'm releasing stuff right now. I know she was feeling this stuff. Um, she was just restless. She just kept doing the circuit, like at one o'clock in the morning, and just do the circuit, do the circuit. I, you know, she'd come in, want to get on the bed, but then back away because she didn't want to get on the bed. So I'm like, okay, whatever. So she did that a few times. So I'd be, I was up at around one or so. But anyways, so becoming a blank slate down to your prototype takes years. And that's the, that is the reason why it takes years because you're releasing all those B cell, T cell memories, the glitchy programming, the random access memory that makes up everything of who you are. So right now, humans do not realize they are heavily programmed. And then I was going through my news feed and scrolling, and since I've been talking about different diagnosable conditions and autism and all that, I've been getting a lot of autism uh, ads or ads for drugs for autism or Down syndrome or any other diagnosable condition. So then it started, then with, with the way the algorithms work because of what I Google or what I say, <clears throat> it's amazing. Because then I'm getting a very condensed version of the world's diagnosable conditions. And then with everything that I know about the B cells and T cells and how those B cells and T cells can create memories of adding something to your body or keeping the telomeres going or taking away. So then think about chromosomes. And we know about X and Y. Okay, those are what the genders and determining the reproductive differences between people. Uh, but then there's also the, the, the extra copy of a chromosome where somebody is has like Down syndrome. And sometimes someone with Down syndrome is so exceedingly smart in one area. Like I've seen a girl on my Facebook who has Down syndrome and she's able to create such intricate scenes, you know, whether it's nature scenes or some other types of scenes on those, what do you call those things? So it's a red thing where it has, oh my, Etch-a-Sketch. <laughs> that was back in the 80s. She's able to create such detail on the Etch-a-Sketch. And I'm thinking, was somebody doing experiments way back when and wanted to see if you have an extra chromosome, if you were to grow an extra chromosome, would you be even more smart? Would you be so smart? And this is where I think sometimes the experiments out there have gone kind of crazy. And then, of course, when something is born in the population, it gets also you know, the spores and then the DNA gets released. And so people then hold those predispositions of, of an extra copy of a chromosome in their DNA. And sometimes it manifests in the population or it gets triggered by certain environmental triggers. Okay. Because things don't just appear. Nothing just appears magically. It must be somehow created or developed. And then it must exhibit itself in the population. And of course, nothing is kept to ourselves. We keep, we share all of our DNA with everybody and their mother. That's why viruses and pandemics happen because things jump from person to person that quick. How it manifests, it's different for everybody. And so then the autism is deleting parts of your chromosomes. And they have all these different chromosomes down to the, the little tiny, you know, little, 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 little smudge of, of uh, ink or algorithm and they have them coded to be like cd14 or whatever there's codes for every single area of your dna and so they've isolated the genetics or the codes to autism and down syndrome or any or schizophrenia and then and then you look at when things came to you know when, when things were recognized or coined like when was autism recognized you know or uh, finally acknowledged with a name was 1911. And why is 1911 so significant? It's not that it's significant, but it's a date that someone had to put because 
a German psychiatrist to describe a symptom of the most severe case of schizophrenia, a, co a concept he also created. So the concept of autism, I guess, came from the whole schizophrenia. And then you know how many experiments have been going on even before you know the 1900s? Scientists have been doing stuff for eons, okay? If you wanted to count back from generation to generation and then using the metrics of time, okay, with the year, month, week, and minute, and day, and month, whatever. So, and so scientists have been around playing with our genetics for years and years and years. And so you know that they were trying to find the perfect prototype. And so, but not even the perfect prototype. Well, yeah, the perfect prototype, like the perfect blank slate, and then adding and subtracting <clears throat> um, different types of programming to the chromosomes. And so the, um, the blood types, that's where blood types come from. Why we have type A and B is the amount of surface marker antigen T cells then constantly developing the B cell memories. So when you think about someone who has a continuous stream of B cell memories <clears throat> and they have it in their blood type and then they are given certain types of programming, let's say like Albert Einstein, and he's studying physics, and he's studying chemistry, and he's studying all these really advanced mathematics and whatever, and he has the blood type A and B, and he has a constant stream of B cell memories that are so, like, like probably photographic memory, when you think about it, that's where you get the savants. That's where you get the geniuses out there because of the, of the, of the, of the programming. First happens in the blood, and then it happens through the... First happens in nature, like your body, where they're taking and stuff and doing stuff to you, right? And then it's nurture. When you're given access to condensed information, and you're highly educated, let's say Oxford and Cambridge and Princeton and all these different universities, and they know you have a bit of imbalance, but your brain is what they're after. They're not really caring about how your body looks and whatever. That's for other industries to go and market stuff. But no, then you take someone who has a little bit of an imbalance, you, you keep them relatively stable enough for them to be coherent and, and figure out these problems that people are having or finding a solution to a, to a problem or, or, or an equation. And then the person's brain starts working. And when, when someone doesn't want to hang out with too many people, and some of these geniuses don't want to hang out, they're more of a, of a hermit. Too many, since they have so much going on inside of them, Crowds of people cause anxiety. That's too much overstimulation. They already have enough stimulation in their blood, and then when they're hanging out with a bunch of people, then they get they get cattywampus. So the, the the mad scientists and the mad geniuses are out there are the ones that actually stay home more than not because then their brain is able to really start developing worlds. And that's why I showed that picture of a meme, a gift of the neurons being developed as a person starts solving problems. That you can actually start creating the worlds that you live in simply by what you write, by what you speak, by, by what you innovate. And so right now we are actually developing the new world as we speak. If you don't develop the world that you want to live in, whatever it is, I can't even say what's right or wrong. Because remember, diversity is amazing. Then you will be left for somebody else to develop the world that you live in. Develop your purpose, your you know, your belief system, develop all that. And we have people who mimic. We have people who regurgitate. And we have people who innovate. And it's okay to have all three. I don't want to be just an innovator because I have to also, I need to make sure that I mimic and regurgitate the, the, the base foundations of things. And then the innovation is when you're evolving the base foundation. So when I mimic or regurgitate that a cell is a protein that has this, this, this component, that's mimic and regurgitation. Nothing wrong with that. And then I want to add more on top of that and say, well, we have these chromosomes and well, we have these diseases and well, we have B cells and T cells and those are causing the addition and subtraction and all this other stuff. And then all of a sudden the evolution. But we have people who don't even innovate. We have people who just mimic and regurgitate. And this is where the JJ meta mentality has now really evolved and said, okay, the purpose of the JJ Meta Mentality is not just to mimic and regurgitate, but to also innovate in the areas that you are strong in. But it does take you getting down to your base prototype. And that means like, like my dog, she doesn't smile anymore. She's still, you know, she's still like 
she she still does what she does. She she licks my nose. She she nibbles on my nose. Um, she uh, I don't know whatever. She 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 take tells me when she needs to go to the bathroom and eat and whatever when she's hungry and she's whiny because she's feeling another virus like I did with my husband. But I'm releasing it and she felt the energy last night. But she's she's definitely her personality is different. I've gotten down to the base prototype with her. Now, if I want to go and program her to be like a happy dog and be whatever the the pit bulls are out there are, are like, I could do that. But I don't need to do, I don't want to do that kind of kinetic energy. I don't want to have to do that kind of MK Ultra on my dog. Because yeah, when you're trying to do uh, behavior modification through positive and negative reinforcement, that can be, you know, first it's time consuming. Yeah, and if I want to, I could do it. But what's the point? Okay. Um, she is right now reactive to her environment. That's all she is. She's not programmed to be anything but whatever she is, which is a dog who just reacts to the environment, who is programmed to my lifestyle. And that's fine. That's exactly, and, and you know, and, and she's okay with, with her sphere of influence. She has access to go down the stairs to the backyard, but she doesn't want to. Okay. She has access to do a bunch of stuff, but she doesn't want to. I have a bunch of toys for her to play with. She doesn't want to play with them. And so, and so getting down to your base prototype is going to take freaking years for some of you because you have so much programming, not only within your blood, but also in your lifestyle, your family, your friends, your community, your vocation, your occupation, your profession, all of your social capital. And I'm telling you, for me to, to get my dog down to the base prototype where I don't feel like she's going to die from cancer disease and chronic illness, I had to be home every single day. For the most part, I think there was a time in 2016 where I went to a job um, and that was right before I started doing the JJ, like I developed the JJ, but I was at a job and she was home more than not. And then finally, while doing the JJ, writing the book and, and really just let my husband know, I'm on to something, please just let me have the time to be at home. You know, we don't need as much money as you think. And if, if I have to work and you have to work, it means that we're spending money on stuff we don't need. And that's not necessary. You alone can actually take care of all of our, all of our major stuff. And if you want more of this stuff, then, you know, then obviously whatever. But, and my book was kind of helping too at the time, the two books that I had out. But I really asked my husband, just give me the time to be at home and figure this out. And he did. I mean, it was a little bit of a fight because, you know, how people are programmed in this town is that, oh, if you're not doing some kind of like widget making, then you're not doing a job. And even still, he has a hard time me thinking that I'm working like, you know, because he, he doesn't understand that innovation is work. But it's not like an immediate return where you get money for every single time you have a thought process. No, I have to actually not only develop a thought process, but I actually have to write it freaking down. And so, you know. And so it, that's still a concept that's still difficult, but it, but I think you might get it. But that, but that's the West Coast and the East Coast where you have all the innovators that have to put out the, the, the time and, and, and spend their own money and their own time to then finally, when they finally get their, their invention figured out, then maybe down the road, they might get a little bit of return on that investment. But yeah, it, the innovation is not like your traditional here, let me go make a widget and then here, give me a, you know, pay for how much time I spent on that widget. No, that, that's, that's one model of work, but that's not the only model of work. So, so I have the time to do this. And that's what's going to take for you guys is to take the time to get yourself down to the base prototype and then start programming your body. And you know you're going to be exposed to so many people's microbes out there who have been under therapies, who have been under all different types of alterations, even the environment. And this is where I have to kind of say that not only does the therapies market contribute to the uh, the alterations to people's chromosomes because of the antibiotic um, qualities to things, but also when you are around things that are not modified by the EPA or um, regulated by the EPA, and there are more radiation or more of the pollutants that then cause the attack on the immune system, that's also where alterations to the chromosomes come from as well. And so then when you think about it, how can you pinpoint what factor or what specific thing caused then the autism and the Down syndrome? And everybody can speculate, but we live in a world full of people, a world full of different um, elements. And 
intentions to the elements and they all factor into why we have cancer disease and chronic illness but you take away biotech that's using antibiotics you take away the holistic system that's using antibiotics against your dna and then that takes away a major component and then of course regulating of course all the all the major industries and their pollutants and then also promoting salt water so even if somebody is in some area where it has a higher pollutant in this area than that area, the salt water will help regulate the person to adapt without undergoing major chromosomal damage. And that's where people are not being given the option is to be able to adapt to their environment. But that also means like you're hearing me sometimes blowing out mucus. You're hearing me cough out stuff. I mean, I was great on Friday before my husband came home because I finally got rid of all the stuff and then he comes home and then I have to go and, and readapt to him. But it's nothing major because there's no other variant that we were, I mean, the BA2 variant was the main one that we, him and I experienced. I'm assuming I didn't get tested for it. But that's the main ones that's, that right now is circulating around the globe is the BA2 variant. So I'm guessing that's what he and I experienced. And so since there's nothing after that that I know of, then whatever he brings home is just going to be tiny components of that BA2 variant. And I already developed immunity to it and a B cell, T cell memory to it. And so it's just then get rid of the excess. And that's really all it is. Nothing crazy. But, but that's the thing is, is that, so, I mean, we know right now at this point, we're not going to get rid of biotech because we have 7.9 billion people in different states of decline and they don't want to feel pain. They don't want to change the way they, 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 their lifestyle and their belief system. Think that who they are today is great, which it is. But remember right now you all are programmed. You all are so heavily programmed through the hormones. And that's why you see so many emotions. You see so much diversity on Facebook and the range of emotions from love, love, love to hate, hate, hate to science and data to uh, anxiety, depressed, whatever, that's all programming. And, but then what happens, you know, a lot of times I don't want to, to stop the programming. I love my love, love, love lifestyle. But that's the thing is that when you're aiming to be uncured and you want to live indefinitely, you have to, I mean, you must know that your emotion right now is not going to be forever. The, the wanting to stay in your politics, religion, science, and hormonal emotions is like wanting to be cured. When you want to be cured, you don't want to evolve. Because I've gone through the stages of love, 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 hate, 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 um, I don't know, uh, anxiety, depressed, angry, like I said, and... And, and, and you have to feel and feel those range of emotions. But if you're trying to get rid of an emotion by taking something to get rid of an emotion, like purposely, like when people are depressed, what do they do? They go to, go, they go to their antidepressants or they go to their self-medication. When you're not being open to saying, okay, maybe I don't have to be love, love, love all the time. That maybe my Facebook shows love, love, love. And maybe that's me looping, me being so cured in a very specific program state that I don't have to be that way but I want to be that way. Okay. But then you also have to take into account all the cancer disease and chronic illness and autoimmune disorders and every other thing that goes along with that, with that lifestyle and that belief system and that way of life. Then you had to take the good with the bad. So then why are you doing all your, your different remedies? Why are you trying to change the world? If you can't even change your love, love, love and hate, hate, hate and anxiety and this and that and that and that. And that's what I mean by you have to really understand the range of emotions that you'll be going through when you're going down to the base prototype. And then when things that used to trigger you don't trigger you and, and you're, you're just scrolling or you're blocking or saying, okay, I'm not going to follow this person anymore because they're going to trigger the fuck out of me, but I'm going to take their information and put my own spin on it and then put it out there. And that's my way of, of, of balancing, being the balancing force. Then, then you're like, Wow. That's a whole other power that most people will never, ever see because they are so stuck in their love, 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 hate, 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 day-to-day to scientists, and that's all I am, and I can't innovate. I just have to regurgitate. You know, and, and if people understand that they are so heavily programmed, then they have the access to then reprogram themselves to what they want, not what someone else has given to them. And that right there is the power of the JJ meta mentality. That is the power. And that does take staying home more than not. That does take doing, you know, a bunch of, I mean, 
in this environment, yeah, you could do it. But I mean, I did a bunch of waterfalls, maybe like once a week for a few, for like maybe a half a year, a year or so. And then I stopped doing it. And then and I just stopped doing it for like a month or two. And then I do more waterfalls and all that stuff. And so things would come up and things would ebb and flow. Um, some, you know, and so, and then finally, you know, I think, was it, it was 16, 17, 19 and 20 is when I really started tapering off and I was eating all food in the food supply, of course. And then in 2022, what are we in 2022? Yeah. Is then I'm totally off of it now. I'm just eating food and deal and getting rid of the mucus. My first and second lines of defense are on point. My lymph nodes are open finally because of whatever variant really forced them to get open and finally unclog and all that stuff. And so now I'm just fluctuating with the environment. Some days I look bloated because I'm dealing with whatever variant and some days I look symmetrical. And it's the fluctuation of looking amazing one day and symmetrical and, and pleasing as far as aesthetically pleasing, you know, socially acceptable. And other days I look like I'm just, you know, full of inflammation. And that's because, yeah, when you are exposed to different variants of people's microbes attacking you with all of their programming, their environmental programming and their therapeutics attacking my lifestyle through my immune system, then I have to fight it off. And that does take, and that war looks like being bloated. Because now you have, because like, you know, how, like, how, like where's all this mucus come from? Like uh, this morning I had all this mucus. I'm like, oh my God. Well, that's the thing. Your body develops proteins, defenses against whatever it's trying to attack it. Or when there's more than what you already have, like I've already been exposed to COVID and Delta and Omicron and BA2. And so when the same version of the thing that I've been exposed to the last, you know, couple years tries to come in and take over again, my body builds up proteins. It builds up an arsenal and that's called mucus. And so it fights it off and then it, and it captures the enemy and holds the enemy prisoner. And then you have to release the enemy into the toilet, into a napkin, into a, a washcloth. And the enemy dries up and kind of frozen like a salt pillar. Uh, there you go. Maybe that's where the salt pillars come from. And then it gets flushed down the toilet or washed in the washing machine and it's gone and you're not dealing with it better out than in. And that is, that is the fluctuating and I don't need any therapies to fluctuate in my environment. I don't want to be cured, but when you're uncured, then you are sensitive to other people, but you're going to be anyways. That's why people die. That's why people die. That's why there has never been within our simulation, anyone really living immortally that you know about because of the whole thing of you're supposed to die someday. And of course you are, if you're taking antibiotics, of course you are, if you're getting surgeries and things taken out of course you are if you're an alcoholic and drug addict of course you are if you're doing all the therapies out there that are trying to protect you against something out there that really you you have an immune system but it needs to be fed and it needs to be have the the immune system be aligned finally to the main programming and you have to get rid of the excess garbage in your central processing unit so then finally your life can finally you know keep maintaining and keep taking on new information and releasing the old information and you keep fluctuating, taking in the new, releasing the old. And it's a constant transition basis. And so, and so, yeah, but then you stay home more than not. And right now our society is giving you that option. Thank you, Biden. Thank you, Trump. Cause both of you worked in tandem together, playing both sides of the fence, playing your parts. And so then we see everybody out there mixing around, mutating the virus, and it's getting, becoming stronger and stronger. And, and, and then you're seeing, you know, surges in the in the ER and all that stuff. And you're seeing kids are getting more diagnosable conditions. And you're seeing young adults and adults. And you're seeing the elderly are more susceptible to sepsis and heart attacks and strokes, not surviving them. And so then it's proof that the viruses obviously are are very highly transmissible. But also, so are medical conditions. They are transmissible too. And then you realize just exactly the world that you live in once you finally peel back the layers of programming. And the whole JJ meta mentality was strategic in the, for the, the universe put this out there. And the universe is strategic. There's always a balancing force. When there's something attacking the human DNA, whatever it is, whatever form it is, there's got to be something else that's going to try to keep the balance. And salt water is a balance. The ocean is the balance to the fresh water and all the microbes. Okay? The salt water, the salt, 
on a human microbiome full of viruses, parasites, protozoa, proteins, fungus, and bacteria is the balancing force so you don't have crazy out of control infection. Not using fucking therapies 24 freaking 7 or using antibiotics to stop the infection because that then creates another inflammation, another defense system against even the antibiotics and even against the therapies being used. And then you have now not only just one set of T cells and B cells working for you, now you have another set trying to work against that. And then your body's at war with itself. And people in the medical system and the holistic system don't even realize this because they're so black and white. Because everything presented to them is freaking black and white. Correlation equals causation. And so they say, you know, in the medical system and the holistic system, oh, correlation is equal causation. But then they produce therapies that then say correlation equals causation, but they word it carefully so it doesn't seem like they're saying that directly, but that's how they're indirectly saying things. Oh, yeah, you do this, you're going to be protected. You do that, you're going to be protected. When in actuality... Uh, what does that fucking mean? That's another word. Protection is left to interpretation. And there's so many words in the English language that is left to interpretation based upon your lifestyle and belief systems and whatever and your education level that then it means different things to everybody. And so everyone's working under different perceptions and, and, and interpretations. And then now you have the Tower of fucking Babel. And you have now more exotic diseases circulating in the environment. And you have more biotech wanting to create another fucking therapy for it. Oh, that's that's convenient. Uh, it's called money. Commodifying your friends and family. And so I'm done with that. And so the, this whole thing with the chromosome addition and, and deletion, well, yeah. When you have so many excessive B-cell memories that are glitchy from so many different environments and then you're exposed to so many different people under different therapies from different environments with different pollutants, yeah, I could see why there is uh, um, copies of chromosomes or and or B, B cells and T cells eating chromosomes. And then you wonder, then how do you get a male then? If there's if the XS is, XX is a female, you know, what kind of T cell, B cell is eating that little leg of the X, turning into a Y, <laughs> you know? And then maybe the, the whole of bringing the, whole, the wholeness back to humanity is allowing for that Y to turn into an X, and now everyone's a female. <laughs> the irony doesn't escape me in all of this when you understand B cells and T cells. And it is, it, you know, food is a, is, is, is a heavy, intense, positive, and your lymphatic system, your adaptive and your innate immune system is a heavy, heavy negative. And you have to balance both sides. And then all the viruses out there and all the programming, whether it's done in a lab or wherever, is is, is all the programming. It's everything. And then you're then you have a, a main operating system, a main programming of humans, okay, with two eyes and nose and mouth and two ears and eyebrows and hair and different colors based upon phenotypical characteristics. And that's just a prototype. Now the variations of how big the lips are and how big, how what color the hair is and all that other stuff. And what size you are in and what color skin is based upon geographical location and your hormones allowing you to change color from one climate to another. And when someone's cured, you know, and someone who is, is African-American, who is a darker color, who who is from like, you know, the equator and they go into like someplace like, Nor you know, Norway, will they turn, you know, will they turn cock? Well, cock will they turn, you know, white, not not become an albino, but just just their their skin becomes now the same skin as everyone around them. And when you're cured, no. When you're uncured, the potential of evolving to the climate conditions, yeah, would to then have your skin color turn the way it's supposed to when it goes through the, the, the adaptation process based upon sunlight or lack thereof. And so it, it all, everything that I've been studying for the last like five years is finally coming together. Now I got to put it on fucking paper and it's like, oh, that's the other side of it. So I could spit it out like that, but now writing an organized sentence and paragraph and all the different chapters that play off each other, that's going to be the next challenge. But I wanted you to see the connection between all of it. Okay. And so, you know, we all, we have the human race has a very specific genetic footprint. And then the phenotypical characteristics are based upon the different programming and, 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 and uh, physical traits based upon the programming. And we know biotech has a major hand in that. 
and I'm not saying it's bad or good, but it also can, you know, they're, they're, it can bite them in the ass when they overdo something or underdo something. And so instead of using, I don't know, salt, water, food, and giving everybody access to information, and if some, and then saying, okay, you know, you're, what, what are they doing? Like here in Ohio, like I knew, and I talked to some lady when I was in the Toastmasters here, because I did Toastmasters for a minute. <laughs> And I was saying, you know, people here in Ohio, they're trained for a specific thing. They're trained for a specific job. Mostly it's in the factories and it's intensive labor. Okay. So you, that's why you people here are so huge. They're like built like brick shit houses over here. Like I'm telling you, the men and the women here and the non-binaries are fucking beasts. Okay. Then you go to California and it's mostly the type A and type B that are more cerebral and they're puny in the body and they're all in their organic diets and all the other shit. And so I see, and so I see also in California is that everyone, like I see Silicon Valley, they're all trying to get their kids into Ivy League colleges, into, into the major universities, Stanford, Berkeley, or the East Coast, you know, like Princeton or Cambridge or Harvard and Yale. And so, so, so when you have, the type A and B is more in the cerebral going into the intellectual side. Then you have more the type O's that are the, the scrappy, I'm going to go and build you fucking mountains type of thing. Then you see how society has been programmed to nation build. You have your thinkers and you have your doers. And sometimes you have both. What happens if you can have both? You can be a thinker and a doer. You can, you can build yourself to be strong if you want to be. And you also can exercise your brain. And so when you get tired of, 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 you know, throwing rocks, then maybe you want to go sit down and write a paragraph about why throwing rocks is kind of stupid. And maybe there's a way you can make something that can help, that can throw rocks for you and alleviate the, the torture of taking a bunch of humans to fucking throw rocks. And you create now a device that says, okay, here, here's a device that can throw a fucking rock. And now you've taken someone who's been in the field who can innovate the goddamn field. That's how you can have one person play both sides of their brain and their body. And that's instead of doing the MK Ultra and playing that game, let's find a different way to innovate humans without torturing them. And also giving them the choice, which I think we're going down that road now. And we're developing as we speak. So it, it's, it's so interesting. It's so, I'm just so like, I'm so excited for, for humanity. I really am. But we have to get through this hard part, which is the transition. And even though we know this stuff now, we're innovating right now. And then you see out there in the world, everyone is still playing the same game. That's your suffering. That's what's going to be, that's going to test you to see if you are still strong in the face of people still looping. Knowing what their kids are going to be going, undergoing. Knowing what the adults are going to be going through. Knowing exactly what's going to happen every fall, in every spring, in every summer. And you still stay strong despite all of your knowledge of you know what's going to fucking happen to a lot of people out there. That's going to be the test to see if you really can remain strong in the face of the amount of adversity out there. And I know you can. You just have to know that, that the things that you have to deal with are temporary. But it's going to be a long journey for some of you. Know your blood type. Because that will at least tell you, give you an idea of how long it's going to be. But know your blood type. All right. Take care. Happy Sunday. Bye.